Good evening, everybody. Well, we've come to another uh, time of studying the Word of the Lord, and I'm glad that you are able to join me today. Hopefully, as I'm talking, we're going to be getting other people that'll that'll just join us in our uh, our study. We've had eight weeks of studying on uh, spiritual warfare and arming ourselves for battle, and this one is the last study. It's the eighth uh, week that we study. We have had an awesome time. Uh, trying to figure out how what God has given us to be able to battle and I'm excited and I just want you to be stronger I want you to be able to overcome any situation and uh, I just want you to get your Bibles ready I want you to get your pencils or your pens and uh, and be ready to mark things out because what we want to do is we want to study the Word of the Lord I also want to encourage you that if you are interested in getting all my notes and getting a, a booklet together. I'm putting a booklet together. Please uh, let us know. You can call us here at the office and talk to Veronica. It's uh, 325-676-2121, 325-676-2121. Or you can just type it on there and says, Pastor, I would like I would like one uh, for a donation. We want to we, there's no money being made. I'm not trying to make money. All we're trying to do is pay for all the copies. I want you to be able to have something to study and know that God is giving you the weapons that he needs. We're going to get into our study in just a few minutes, uh, but I do want to just kind of bring a little bit of announcements that I do want to make. I know that this Sunday, uh, July 5th, uh, we were uh, going to start with our children's ministry. Um, uh, but because of the fact that we see the increase of, of the, the COVID-19, uh, it has made me decide to wait a little bit longer. We are uh, going to postpone the ministry the, of children in our church uh, for another month. But I do want to encourage you to continue to come we, to our church services. We have our Spanish service at, at uh, not 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock, I'm sorry, 9 o'clock, and then at 11 o'clock we have our English service. So we want to be able to uh, continue on. Uh, you're safe. We are taking every precaution that, it, that we need to take. So uh, we, with that said, we'll be receiving our offering a little bit later and, uh, and give you information on what's going on. I want you to open your Bibles, and we're going to start reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Five, uh, Second Corinthians chapter ten, verses four and five. Now today, of course, we've been uh, we we have named this uh, arming our, yourself for battle, and we have talked about spiritual uh, warfare. This is the eighth study, and what we're going to study today is the weapons of our warfare, our offensive weapons of what God has given us. Now, as you know, the strategies in spiritual warfare, there are two types, the defensive and the offensive. Last week, we were able to spend some time concerning the defensive strategies that the God has given us. And what He has given us is the armor of God. And one of the greatest things that we have is that God has given us the protection of the armor. And I want to encourage you that every single day, you ought to be getting up every morning and saying, God, I'm going to put on the armor of God in order to, to be able to to protect myself uh, from the attack of the enemy. Now, there are there are six of them that I want to give you real quickly, and then we're going to get into the offensive part of the armor of God or of the of the strategy that God has given us to defend ourselves. Number one, uh, the armor of God is the belt of truth. You have to you have to uh, live in the truth, and we know that by living in the truth is we know that Jesus is the truth. And there's no other religion, there is no other way. You've got to know the truth. The second thing is a helmet of salvation. Your salvation is very, very important. And God wants you to protect that salvation. Uh, that salvation is drawing us from darkness into His light. Number three is the breastplate of righteousness. Living righteous before the Lord uh, every single day. Number four is the shield of faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is much needed. Remember that Jesus would speak to the disciples and say, Oh, ye of little faith. 
God, there is, there, is a, there is a measure of faith that God wants us to have. The other one is the shoes of the gospel. How important it is for us to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we go and preach the gospel of Christ, it is able to give us power to be able to overcome the enemy. And the last one is the sword, which is the word of God. It is important for us to understand that the, 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 the sword, of course, that is also going to be offensive uh, to, uh, to utilize against the enemy, but it is the word of God. So those are defensive strategies that God has given us to help us and to protect us. Now, if we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, here's what it says. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. Now, I want you to look at that because it says that the weapons that we fight with are not weapons of, uh, of the world. In other words, sometimes we're wanting God to, for God to fight our battles. And this is where the mistake is because we get so confused of, and we say, God, I need your help. I need you to help me you know, do this, overcome this. I'm asking you to help me fight this. I'm asking you to help me do this. And all of a sudden, we, we don't realize that God is not going to do that. God has given us the weapons that we need in order for us to fight the enemy. And the reason why we're not conquering and the reason why we are not winning the battle is because we are not fighting. So every weapon that God gives us is not of this world. But on contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Now let me give you another another version. It says the weapons we use in our fight are not the world's weapons, but God's powerful weapons. They are God's weapons given to us. If they're God's weapons given to us, then they must have the power, and God gives us the ability to use them. Now watch this. We destroy false arguments, because it also says which we use to destroy strongholds, and we destroy false arguments, we pull down every proud obstacle that is raised against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive and make it obey Christ. In other words, we dominate with this power. There is nothing that the enemy can come and against us if we utilize the weapons that God has given us that are divine, that come from heaven, that have the power. We're able to demolish strongholds, demolish false arguments, demolish everything the enemy brings against us. That is so powerful for us to know. Now, God's given us these weapons for, for self-defense and for protection. Weapons are those tools that God gives us as believers. And it's amazing because most of the time the believers live, live a life of depression, defeated. They live a life of, of, of just of sadness. And I want you to understand that that's not, the, that's not the life that God has given us. God has given us a life of, of prosperity. God has given us a life of, of rejoicing, of victory, of taking possession of all those things. But the issue is not God, but us. We don't utilize those weapons that God has given us. Now, they are divine. They are heavenly. They come from God. And if they come from God, then they must be good weapons. They have the power to demolish strongholds. When you know, when we were talking about uh, the uh, the the enemy and knowing the enemy, the enemy Ephesians tells us that there are strongholds. There are demons that come and settle and, and settle in strongholds. They settle in your family. They settle in our cities. They settle in our government. They settle in our nation. They settle. They settle in, in our marriages, everything, in our families, in our household. And they, they come in and try to take a hold of that, of that whatever they have uh, they've, uh, settled in so that they can destroy that. And then they call demons to come and destroy. Well, the Bible tells us that the weapons that God has given us are weapons that have brought us victory. And we've got to learn to utilize it. Now, what are these weapons? I'm going to give you real quickly, there's so many weapons, but I'm just going to give you some quick weapons that you all probably already know, but you need to know how to utilize them. Number one, number one is this, prayer. Now I know that some of you are thinking, prayer, I do pray, Pastor, but it's so difficult. But there's different ways of praying. 
Ephesians 6.18 tells us, And pray the Spirit in all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So what it's telling us is this, is to pray, but pray in the Spirit. In all occasions, whatever you're going through, pray in the Spirit. Prayer is very powerful. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, you have that power to avail anything. In whatever situation you're going, you should pray. Now, praying in the Spirit is this. This is so important for you to understand. That being filled with the Holy Spirit and praying in, in the tongue that God has given us confuses the enemy. We talked about this last week. A lot of people don't understand this, that praying in the Spirit is praying in that language that God has given you so that you're able to accomplish whatever God wants. It's the language that God understands. It's a language that God that speaks His level. Do you remember the, that we talked about this, that in the beginning it says that the, the world was in chaos, was in darkness, it was formless, and the Spirit of the Lord hovered over it. And what did the Spirit do? It went about looking to see what the world needed because God was about to create it. And so when, it, when the Spirit hovered over that, it tells us that it, then all of a sudden, I believe He went to heaven and He said, God, this is exactly what it, what it means. And God immediately began to say, let there be light. And then God began to form and God began to create the world. The Spirit of God knows you intimately. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that it is the Spirit that makes intercession for us. Because we can come to God and pray with our own words. But we don't even, know, we don't even have enough words to be able to really talk the language of God. Yes, He understands. But He wants deeper things. And if we pray in the Spirit, it confuses the enemy. When we start telling the enemy, oh, or when we start praying, God, I'm so weak, I, I have these issue, issues, I have this problem, the enemy, the enemy all of a sudden says, oh, I know what's wrong with him. But when you begin to talk in the Spirit, there's something different about the Spirit. It says, uh, it tells us that we should pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. Number two, the Word of God. We talked about the, 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 the sword of the Spirit. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is strong. And, and, and I, I just want to let you know that, that there is power in the Word of the Lord. You know, I was praying one day, and I, and I, I was going through a very difficult time, and I said, God, I need you to do a miracle in my life. Would you just speak it? You, you have that authority that if you speak your word, when you created, you just spoke, let there be light and there was light. When you spoke about, uh, uh, of things that came to pass, when you spoke to the, when you spoke to the waves, Jesus, uh, or to, to, uh, when you spoke to the waves and when you rebuked the, the wind, things happened. God, do it. You can do it. And I, the Spirit of the Lord, put in my heart, and he said this, you speak it. I've given you that authority. I've given you the word of God. Here it is, that everything that we need, we speak the word of the Lord. We not only live the word, but speak the word, know the word, memorize the word. This is so important. The devil doesn't want you to know the word. When we don't know the Word, we don't know the promises. We don't know the power that we have. And if we study the Word, it gives us the power that we need to overcome the enemy. We know that Jesus overcame the enemy when He was tempted in the desert. The Bible tells us there that Jesus was able to overcome the, uh, the uh, in Luke, I believe it's in Luke chapter 4. Uh, for where he overcame the enemy and the temptation by speaking the word. That is a powerful offensive tool that we use is the word of God. Number three is fasting. Uh, Isaiah 58, 6 tells us this. Is not this the fast that I choose? I choose or, or to lose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. 
In other words, the fasting has such an anointing and power. Why? Because of the fact that fasting uh, allows you to be able to put God first. Now, there's different types of fasting. People fast for many things. People fast to lose weight. But I'm talking about biblical fasting. There's also different types of biblical fasting. Some people say, well, I don't fast, Pastor, because I'm on medication and I, I, I cannot eat. Well, I think there's a misconcept of people knowing how to fast. And that is a way that the enemy keeps them from fasting. Fasting is very important. Now, uh, biblical fasting is essentially giving up food or something else for a period of time in order to focus on the thoughts of God. In other words, what is it God wants? It's for breakthroughs. It prepares us uh, for spiritual uh, uh, things and helps us overcome the enemy or anything that hinders us. It is a breakthrough. It helps us through prayer and fasting. And we saw that in the Bible. You know, we see that Jesus constantly fasted and he constantly prayed. Now, let me give you some quick things uh, about fasting. Number one, there's a regular fast, which consists of abstaining from all food and drink except for water. That's found in Matthew 4 and in Luke 4. Uh, in other words, that's the kind of fast that a lot of people do for a period of time. And a lot of people say, well, that's if, if you are, I, I can't do that, Pastor, because I have to have something in my stomach because I take medication. Well, here comes the partial fast. You can, you have the partial fast. It's when you abstain from some particular food, as in case of Daniel, while in Babylon, Daniel only partook of certain foods. Now, I want to I want to say something here and I'm probably gonna uh, you know people are gonna say no that's not true and I, I, I just want to bring on the Daniel fast Daniel didn't fast for 21 days all right people say well I'm doing the Daniel fast for 21 days the breakthrough was after 21 days Daniel fasted for 10 days and after 10 days it took that long 21 days in order for him to get to re to receive it now if you're gonna fast for 21 days it's not really the Daniel fast. It's, it's your fast and beyond. But Daniel fasted the partial fast. Some people say, well, I'm not going to eat, I'm not gonna eat uh, uh, anything you know, for, for, all the, for all this amount of days because it's a Daniel fast. Well, uh, you have to understand that the partial fast is when you abstain from some foods, some kind of food, but not all types of food. If you take medications, this would be a great thing for you to do. So there's, there's no excuse for us not to fast. And the devil doesn't want us to fast because there's power in fasting. There is also the liquid fast, which means you abstain from only, uh, on, uh, abstain only from solid foods and you, you choose the path of whatever juices or whatever you're going to drink water. Uh, there's the absolute fast. The absolute fast is no food, no liquids of any kind uh, at all for a, for a short period of time. Uh, that is where you don't, do that. Uh, you know, there'll be times that God will have me do three days of of that type of fast, but it has to be from the Lord. And the last one is a supernatural fast, which is found, of course, with Moses and with Jesus. They were the ones that abstained from food and water for 40 days. That that has to be supernatural. You know, people, it has to come from God because of the fact that if it doesn't come from God, people can get uh, sick and people can even die. They can come into starvation and die. So there is no excuse of fasting. We ought to fast. Another one, another uh, offensive uh, a strategy or weapon that we use is witnessing. Uh, spreading the gospel to the believer. Telling people about Jesus Christ. What do you mean, Pastor, by that, that hinders the enemy? Because his whole thing is trying to, to destroy as many souls as he can. But by you using the Word of God, your testimony, getting people out of darkness and bringing them to light is a weapon that God has given you, the power of your testimony. Jude chapter 1 verse 23 says this, Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to still others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. In other words, you hate sin, but you don't hate them. And so you're going to go out and you're going to go preach the gospel. That's why 
uh, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. He was preparing their feet, their their walk. He was preparing their their uh, their their lives so that they could go out and bring people to Christ. He gives them the commandment, which he gives us to go out into the world and make disciples and preach the gospel. That is a weapon that God has given us. So if you are not witnessing to the Lord, uh, for the Lord, excuse me, then you are not utilizing that weapon. Another one is worship. It's found in 2 Chronicles 20, 22 through 24. Worship. Worship is very important. When you, when you are going through a difficult time, sometimes you don't even feel like praying, but you feel like praising. You feel like worshiping. And so there are many ways that you worship. There are many ways. As long as you uplift who God is. Praise is thanking Him and, and applauding for the things that He does. Worship is recognizing who He is. That in spite of all the things that you're going through, you're lifting Him up and you know that who He is, that He sits on the throne. Now look at 2 Chronicles 20, 22 through 24. We realize that Jehoshaphat was going into war. And, and here's what they do. In verse 22 to 24, as they begin to sing and praise, now, as they begin to worship, they didn't even go to war. They just begin to worship. They knew they were in battle, but they begin to worship. And it's the same thing with, with uh, the walls of Jericho. The Lord said, I just want you to worship. I just want you to yell out. I just want you to begin to worship. And the walls begin to fall when they begin to worship. And here they begin to sing and praise the Lord. And, and that set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites and Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and uh, annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground, one no one had escaped. It, they, God allowed, as they worship, the enemy destroyed themselves. And let me tell you, that's why when you come to church, there, that's why when you go to, uh, to your room and you, and you sit there and begin to pray, then beginning to worship. Come into the house of the Lord. Begin to worship. There's many ways of worshiping the Lord. And God begins to do miracles in, there, in, in your life. The next one is the Holy Spirit. Another weapon is the Holy Spirit. And we're coming towards the end here. The Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says this, but you will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You're going to receive that power that you need. The Holy Spirit is going to guide you. The Holy Spirit is going to teach you. The Holy Spirit is going to give you that which you need. Luke chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 and then verse 14 says, and Jesus full of the Holy Spirit uh, it says, uh, tells us there, or, uh, that uh, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil and ate nothing in those days. In other words, he fasted. And, and, and after having ended, he was hungry. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, uh, of the power of Spirit. So he was led by the Spirit. He received power during the time to overcome the enemy. And when he returned, he returned with more power of the Spirit of the Lord. Let me tell you, you have to ask the Spirit to come and baptize you. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. The next one is the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important. Listen, it's not about you wearing a cross. And I'm not against people wearing crosses. It's about the knowing the power of the cross. Colossians 2.15 says this, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made in a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. You've got to recognize what happened on that cross. Jesus died for you. Jesus, Jesus took everything, every sin on you. There is power in the cross. Remember that God has forgiven you of your sins. The next one is the blood of Jesus. Now let me tell you how important this is. Having the blood of Jesus upon yourself. Do you remember when the, uh, the plague of, of death was coming over? They were to kill a lamb which represented Jesus and take the blood of the lamb and put it on the door, doorpost. And when the death angel would come and would see uh, the, the lamb's blood, he would pass over because there was power in the blood of the lamb. 
And there is the way that when you have the blood, it's not about about saying the blood of Jesus. And you know, I, I hear people saying the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. No, it's about having the blood of Jesus over your life. When you ask Jesus to come into your life, he washes you and cleanses you with his blood and you are able to live under the blood of Jesus. Now look what it says in Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. And I heard the loud voice in heaven saying, now have, come, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down and he, has, and he who accuses them day and night before our God. They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Remember I told you about giving, witnessing was a weapon? That's why. It also tells us here that it is by the blood of the Lamb that we were, they were able to overcome the accuser of the saints. The blood of the Lamb upon our lives is important. That's why when you partake of communion, you are, you are, you are able to just continue to put the blood of Jesus over you. And the last thing is the name of Jesus. All right? The name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9, 9 through 11 gives us uh, 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 this, but he says, therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In other words, there is no other name. The name of Jesus is the one that controls all these things. John chapter 14 verses 13 says this, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. In other words, whatever happens, he has that authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Even demons tremble. Do you remember in Mark chapter 5 verses 1 through 8, the man who had been demon-possessed, they could never control him. When Jesus comes to the Gadarenes and he's there, he runs to him and he says, Jesus, why have you come to torment me before my time? He knew exactly who Jesus was. I want to encourage you today that all these things, and I've kind of gone rapidly on these things, but I want you to know that God has given you weapons so that you can utilize them. I want you to study these and say, God, I want to know how to use every single weapon. There's many others, but the Lord has just given us a few right here in this study so you can conquer this. Now, I want to finish with this, and I want to tell you, and I want to pray for you and encourage you with this. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19 says, I have given you authority. Listen to this. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing and nothing will harm you. Praise the name of the Lord. He has given us that the weapons. He's given us the armor. He's given us everything that we need to conquer. And I want to encourage you to put on the armor of God every single day. And I want you to begin to say, Lord, I want to use every weapon that I have. I want to let you know that whatever you're going through today, you can be an overcomer. You've got to decide to use those weapons. Today, God is giving you victory. And I do want to pray for you. And if you have any special needs, uh, I want to pray for you today. Uh, I want you to put it, I want you to type it in there. And, and I want you to say, Pastor, I want you to pray. And as we go back, we'll hear it and we'll begin to pray for you. But there is power. You have the power of God in your life. I want to say a quick prayer for you. And then we're going we're gonna, to uh, gonna receive our offering. I want to encourage you. And I just pray that this series has been a blessing to you. I mentioned this, that I will be giving uh, with, through, with a, a love offering. I will be putting a booklet together. If you would want, put it on there. Call our offices uh, at uh, 325-676-2121 and uh, we'll make sure to get it to you. We can email it to you, whatever we can do. Uh, we want it to be a blessing. But let's pray. Let's believe today, okay? Would you bow your heads? Father, we come to you today and I thank you for the power of the anointing that you've given us. That's another weapon that we didn't even talk is the anointing of the Lord upon our lives. There's so many weapons that we need to know. And God, the only way is when we study the word of the Lord. 
I pray that everyone that is watching, everyone that is going through a difficult time, let them know that today they can overcome and they can, they're able to be victorious. I pray that today, God, you'll begin to turn things around. Let them begin to put on the armor of God. Let them begin to utilize every weapon that they need, God, to overcome the enemy. Whatever it may be, it may be a physical thing, it may be an emotional thing, it may be a financial thing, whatever it is, God, we can overcome it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, God. I pray that, God, you would sustain us and you would place your, yourself upon our lives. I pray for those for our nation. I pray, God, I pray that you're able to help our nation during these times of crisis and people that are struggling with maybe COVID-19. I pray for every church, every pastor, every believer that you would keep us from the COVID-19, from this virus. Father, we just pray we pray for those that may need a job or maybe they're barely making it because of, of what's going on. Show that God, show your people that you're with us and you'll never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I just want to encourage you just to let you know uh, on giving, please. Uh, some of you, it's been very difficult for you to come to church. I know that uh, there are different reasons why you may not be able to come. But I, I do want you to know we need your help. Um, Continue to be faithful to the Lord, not because pastor is asking you, but you know what? You don't want to lose your blessing. You want to be obedient to the Lord. So, you know, some of you are mailing it in, and I thank you for that. You can mail it in at 2442 Old Anson Road, 2442 Old Anson Road, and then uh, you can, uh, it'll be 79603, mail it in here. You can also give online. If you give online, you can go to our website, and it is uh, Live Church txag.org. It's Life Church. There you see it on your screen. I want you to, you can go in there and you, you can have it done. Also, you can text to give. It's very important. You text to give uh, and you can text the number there. You'll see it, 76959, 76959. And then you put there, LC Harvest. And it'll take you to a place where you can give to the Lord. I want to just thank you. Thank you so much for being such a part. I want you to share these series with people and I want you to understand, don't live uh, defeated, live victorious. Make up your mind and say, today I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna continue on. We love you so much and we thank you and we just, we're looking forward. Next week we'll begin a new series. I, I'm working on a new series. I don't know exactly, um, I, I'm just, I wanna surprise you. But maybe there are things that you would like to learn. If you would like to learn something uh, for us to study, uh, write it down and maybe we can make it uh, happen. Uh, we could even, maybe next week, I'm not for sure, maybe we could have a talk show where uh, you could uh, bring in your, uh, your questions and maybe I can answer them. I don't know. I want to be led by the Spirit of the Lord. Also, I want to invite you, come on Sunday. We're taking every precaution. People are wearing their masks. People, uh, we are uh, taking temperatures. We are, we're doing everything that we can. We're sitting people in uh, distancing. And I mean, this past Sunday, we had a marvelous move of God. We want you to be part of it. All right. We have our Spanish service at, at 9 a.m. and our English service at, at 11. So we love you. And until next week, God bless you.